Okay, so maybe we're not completely out of the crypto winter quite yet. Things have been looking a little less chilly though, haven't they? And they could be about to warm up even further potentially. Institutional money is getting back into crypto and though we haven't seen prices necessarily reflect that, we could do soon apparently. And that's partly thanks to a big deal between Coinbase and BlackRock. We're gonna have details of that for you in just a second. We've also got an exclusive chat with India's former finance secretary. We're gonna be asking him why the government there is hating on crypto quite as much as it has been. Voyager customers, meanwhile, could be getting their money back. You're gonna to wanna to listen to that. And there's something going on with NFTs in China? Really? Join thousands of NFT traders who already start their day on Crypto Slam. So the last few months have been a little bit chilly for a lot of us in crypto. Losing a couple of trillion dollars in market cap will do that to you, won't it? You know who's not chilly though? People with billions. Well, I say people, institutions uh, really just as well. Institutions, for instance, like BlackRock, those guys have loads of money and apparently they're gonna try and bring more of it to crypto via Coinbase, actually, to be precise. Those two are partnering up to extend crypto trading to BlackRock clients. Forecast Lachlan Keller is here, thankfully, to tell us why we should be caring about this deal. Lachlan, tell us about it. BlackRock, one of the world's largest uh, investment management funds, has announced a partnership with uh, another giant uh, US-based crypto exchange, uh, Coinbase, to extend the use of its uh, asset management software, Aladdin, uh, to customers who also hold digital assets uh, with Coinbase. BlackRock's Aladdin software uh, allowed uh, BlackRock to become one of the world's largest asset management firms. Um, and so by extending this um, technology through to uh, the crypto space, uh, it's seen as a real sentimental um, uh, development. Uh, but also on the technical side, if this technology is uh, now to be used within the crypto space, they could uh, show real returns for investors. So is this institutions finally getting around to investing meaningfully in crypto? This is a significant development for the crypto space as it's uh, just another sign of the growing institutional adoption um, for cryptocurrency. We've seen over the last few years to months, while the wind has been taken out of the sails a, a little bit uh, during the crypto market downturn, uh, institutions continue to move into the space. We see that with Goldman Sachs starting to offer uh, crypto trades. We're also seeing that with the uh, growing um, release of cryptocurrency ETFs, maybe not so much in the US, but certainly around the world. Uh, and so while there might be a, a little bit of a slowdown, this is definitely seen as a, a development for institutional uh, adoption. If this is potentially such a big deal then, why didn't it seem like it moved prices like Bitcoin too much? It's been a bit of an unusual week for cryptocurrency prices. They've been uh, relatively, remained relatively stable despite some pretty major uh, geopolitical tensions where we might see a few of the developments or um, you know maybe market sentiment um, show some interest in in this uh, deal was coinbase's price actually shot up by 30 percent in early trading yesterday um and, and though it did come back down so while crypto itself remains relatively stable maybe um that interest might be reflected in uh coinbase's share price all right, thanks for that, Lachlan. So it looks like BlackRock is getting in on crypto bets. Others in Australia and South Korea have been doing the same. Australian fund manager Holon recently launched retail Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Filecoin funds. It has told Forecast that with the positive moves on regulating crypto there, Australian pension funds could be about to make some big bets on the sector. Well, I think that um, for large institutional investors in a superannuation environment, um, I anticipate that we'll start to see allocations you know, in, in the medium term. Uh, modest to start with, but ultimately I think that we'll start to see, see institutional adoption um, in the not too distant future. 
And over in South Korea, leading crypto exchange BitThumb is linking its system with top financial institutions. Users will apparently be able to use their mobile apps to check their crypto investments. That is for customers of Samsung Securities, NH Nongyup, and KB Cookman Bank as well. BitThumb says it wants to make crypto investing easier. God knows we could all do with a little bit of help on that front. So like I said, still a little bit chilly things though, perhaps getting a little warmer. That is unless you live in India. I think it's fair to say the Indian government doesn't really like crypto. It's certainly being taxed to death. Their blockchain technology, however, might be a slightly more different nuanced matter. Forecast predictor Mukherjee has been speaking exclusively with India's former finance secretary about this. Take a listen. India has been rather shy in its adoption of the blockchain technology, mainly because of its association with cryptocurrency. That's according to the country's former finance secretary, Subhash Chandra Garg. Speaking to Forecast, Garg believes blockchain's potential will be recognized and adopted in India, but the technology so far has been overshadowed by the government's opposition to the use of cryptocurrencies related to it. Blockchain was always seen as something innovative, but it is so um, deeply uh, enmeshed with the uh, the asset or the currency side of it that it was difficult or it has been difficult so far to separate the, uh, the, the technological innovation with the uh, currency or the asset part of it and therefore uh, the struggle has been going on for quite some time. Garg, who served as India's finance secretary in 2019, said blockchain technology is superior to traditional database technologies in organizing assets and many other types of services. Um, the sense is that this is uh, the future and lots of um, you know, businesses, economy, assets, even personal interactions would be sort of uh, a shift to the, this one. So I am absolutely um, uh, so, uh, optimistic about the future of this technology in the world. And this is perhaps going to be one of the biggest and the best innovation which has been done for um, uh, turning the uh, human society into a digital society and the economy into a digital economy. However, the former finance secretary said when the technology arrived in India, it was seen as being associated with Bitcoin, which set a bad precedent. Coming to India, uh, my sense is that we uh, we have uh, started on a, on a wrong note. Uh, uh, it came uh, with Bitcoin as a kind of currency substitute and therefore um, uh, and the other kind of features of what kind of assets it can generate what kind of services it can deliver these did not come in the uh, forefront at all so bitcoin came as a currency which uh, alarmed the central bank and the government that they summon or something which is going to threaten your um, uh, your uh, exclusive domain currency. The Reserve Bank of India has said it seeks a complete ban on cryptocurrencies, while India's current finance minister, Nirmala Sitharaman, introduced a flat 30% tax on all crypto income. The country then imposed a 1% tax deducted at source on all crypto transactions above 10,000 Indian rupees or roughly 126 US dollars. India also does not allow traders to offset losses made in one cryptocurrency with gains made in another. Garg said the restrictions in India and the global drop in cryptocurrencies in the last couple of months have seen crypto transactions decline in the country. Interestingly, he does not see crypto lasting for very long. Cryptocurrencies as a general currency, as a general purpose currency outside their platforms, is not a good uh, option. Right? The cryptocurrencies as a general currency will not survive. They will uh, not work. They will die in that sense uh, as a general, general currency. Uh, the sovereign currencies would continue to rule the roost 
in their domestic considerations or territories. So, will cryptocurrency survive in India despite all the opposition from the government? We will be keeping a watch. In Kolkata, India, I am Pradeepta Mukherjee, Forecast. All right, we've got some good news for you. If you're a Voyager digital customer, I bet you weren't expecting to hear those words. According to the Wall Street Journal, the exchange has been given approval to return $270 million to you. A US court said Voyager has given enough reasons to justify these customers getting some of their money back. NFTs could also be making a come back. Uh, yeah, I know you might have heard that before. I think a lot of people have been trying to call the comeback of NFTs for about a year now, but Instagram is getting in on them. Its NFT platform is available in around 100 countries. It is not interestingly calling them NFTs though. They're actually called digital collectibles, apparently. Uh, and if you think you've heard that phrase before, it might be because China is also using it as a technicality. Talking of which, even though there's been a crackdown on NFTs in China, the country's NFT industry is still a big deal. Its influence goes way beyond the country's border, and that is why the focus of the latest edition of Word on the Block has been on the subject. In it, Forecast Editor-in-Chief Angie Lau has been speaking to Catherine Ng. She's Managing Director at TZ APAC. Despite uh, China's uh, strict regulations, uh, the Chinese influence has exerted way beyond its borders and it's very prevalent in uh, markets overseas, international markets. That, and people do look to China, even though they're governed very differently, for inspiration too. And, and you know, this, this year, um, there's going to be this metaverse industry professional committee founded in by the Chinese government that aims to set this industry standards for um, its metaverse ambition. So they want to talk, they want to integrate and cultivate leading companies and products, strengthen R&D in this area to support the metaverse. And it's it will be very interesting to see how this uh, can be experimented with more open boundaries in an interactive digital reality and explore more concepts of interoperability between public and private chains. Um, right now, uh, there is, I do admit, there is a lack of interoperability <laughs> and, and standardiz standardization um, across blockchains in China and also overseas too, like in international markets, um, because private consortium blockchains in China don't really interact with each other, even within China itself. All right, make sure you catch the full interview of that. That is out on Monday. You're not going to want to miss it. That's it from us though. Like and subscribe to this video for more content like it and let us know your thoughts on what's happening in the comments.